day today. Um, if you haven't read the announcements or received the email, um, our beloved Sarah um, passed away in a car accident um, this week. Um, so because of that, um, the order of service has obviously changed and some things along that. Uh, please be with us. Uh, regular announcements are on the bulletin, but I want to make one special announcement, and that is over here in the corner. There is uh, Brenda Frizzell and Lynn Harty. Would you guys wave your hands? Um, they're counselors. If there's any time in the service that you really want to go talk to someone, you and your family, um, make your way over there, and they would love to talk to you. Um, with that, would you please greet each other with the peace of Christ?
your promise, oh God. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Your grace is enough. Heaven reaches out to me.
Church, you may be seated. I'm going to offer us um, a time of prayer. Um, God, I, I pray for, for all of us who are dealing with unexpected loss. God, I especially pray for um, all of the people who are involved and all of the groups that Sarah was involved in from uh, dancing to children's ministries. God, I want to pray for the children. God, I also want to pray for um, the other person involved in the accident. It's really easy to, for, to forget about that in our lives. I know there are many other things and while certain things are very heavy on our hearts, maybe there's, there's other things on our, my brothers and sisters' hearts here that need to be lifted up. God, I thank you that when we pray, we don't pray alone. When we pray, you're there. And when we pray as a church, we're all here. God, be with us as we lift up what we need to hear. And make them become all of our prayers to ease our burdens. you for helping us thank you when sometimes it's difficult God we know that in all of these things that your hope and glory are sometimes involved we are people who preach resurrection resurrection requires death and that mystery is hard for us God, help us as we move in through this time. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, I would like to invite Pastor Ellen and the children to come forward for children's time. Well, where is everybody this morning? A big fat kid? A big fat kid? Yeah. Good morning. It's kind of a strange morning, isn't it? Come sit down. Come sit down. Yeah, it's kind of a strange morning. I'm glad to be back. I've missed you. But it's kind of a weird way to come back, isn't it? We've had a huge loss in our church. We loved Miss Sarah with all our heart. And now she's in heaven. And she's away from us. And one day we know we will see her again. And Pastor Clay has a little story he wants to share with us. This is my story box. I love to tell stories from it. Sometimes there's funny stories. Sometimes there's happy stories. Sometimes there's sad stories. I think today's has a sad story. It's a story about a super special flower. Everyone liked this flower. Can I help you? Yeah. Will you help me put the flower back on there? And this flower was great, and people love to run and see this flower. And Miss Pastor Ellen's challenged. <laughs> I'm not a daddy yet. You're going to be soon. So I need practice with these, de with these kids' toys. It worked last night. There we go. We'll just put the flower there. <laughs> and this was a very special flower, and all of these lovely bees came to see it. Some of the bees made noise. Some of them are quiet. And they would sit with this flower every day. 
And Jackson, do you want to be? There you go. That one makes noise. <laughs> and they would learn from this flower, and they would sing songs, and they would dance, and then they would go home. Even the ones that don't make much noise. And they would come back the next day, and they would learn new stories. And this flower would tell them about heaven and Jesus. And then they would go back home. And one day, when they went to bed, like last night, there was a really big storm. You guys closed your eyes like you were sleeping. And after that really big storm, they woke up, and their flower was no longer there. And the bees got together, and they cried, and they were sad. Because in the storm, that flower died. And that flower's not coming back. And then their friends came and told them about it. The butterflies came. And they all sat around, and they told stories about the flower. Some of them drew. Some of them sang songs. Some of them danced. And they talked about how much they missed the flower and how things weren't going to quite be the same. Do you know why I tell this story today? Why? Well, that reminds me of Sarah. It does remind me of Sarah. Do you know that I've cried a lot this week? I did. I cried a bunch. It's been really, really tough. My mom cried. Your mom cried too? I cried with your mom. It was very, very sad for us. And my mom your mom was sad too. Is right here? <laughs> she is right there. Well, one of the things the bees did is they liked to tell each other stories about what happened and remembered the good things that that flower shared them. Do you guys have any fun memories or things you would like to share? Of Luke, you remember? I love the old book of Luke. And what are you wearing today, Alex? Huh? Uh. <laughs> 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 Where did you get that tutu? Sarah made it. Sarah made you a tutu. You know, I think we need to continue to remember stories about Miss Sarah. Because I think when we tell stories to one another, and even when we cry together, we remember her and we honor her. And so let's remember to tell stories about Miss Sarah. And sometimes we're going to cry, but you know, sometimes we're going to laugh. And that's okay too. Because I think Miss Sarah would want us to laugh some too. So can you do that for us this week? Can you remember some good stories about Miss Sarah, but also sad stories? And we laugh and we cry, and in we laughing and crying, guess what? Eventually we heal. That doesn't mean we don't miss Miss Sarah, because we're always going to miss her. But it helps us to smile more than we cry as the days go by, and we think about her. Can you do that? Why don't we pray together? Do you want me to do it or do you want to do it? Why don't you pray for us, Pastor? Boys and girls, let's pray, okay? Dear God, thank you for Miss Sarah. Miss Sarah. Thank you for her love. Thank you for her love. Thank you for her glitter. Thank you for her glitter. And her tutus. And her tutus. And the good memories. And the good memories. We will always have. We will always have. Lord. Lord. Help us, Help us. To, cherish, to cherish, to hold dear to us, to hold dear to us. Sarah's love, which will never end. 
There is love which will never end. We thank you that she is with you if she can't be with us. We thank you that she is with you if she can't be with us. And we remember that. And we remember that. This week. This week. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We pray. We pray. Amen. Amen. And what would Miss Sarah have us do? Yay, Jesus. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Clay. As the children are leaving, let me offer a prayer for our offering. Dear God, I thank you so much for the chance to give. God, allow these gifts to do your work, to save souls, to teach children, and to buy glitter. Bless our hearts as we give and bless these gifts to do your work. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard a tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleasing that I never know. Still into the 
and stories of what they think you're like, but I heard a tender whisper of love in the dead As our offering comes forward, we always like to say something that we're thankful for, and I'm thankful that I got to know Sarah, got to work with Sarah, got to put on silly skits and silly plays. Um, And when I'm thankful, I always like to say, thanks be to God. Thank you, Clay. Thank you for your leadership this morning and, and for the last two months. I understand he has just done an amazing job with Pastor Tommy's help, so let's thank Clay. I told him last night, I think my debt is growing deeper and deeper every day where he's concerned. Good morning, church. It's good to be with you again. It's just unbelievable that it's under these circumstances, right? And here I'm already crumbling. You see, I was okay till I walked in this building and felt your love and the hands holding mine as we prayed. It's been a tough morning since I walked in. And Bill Johns handed me a note when I walked in. And I don't, Bill, are you in here? Oh, he's over there. Okay. No farewell words were spoken. No time to say goodbye. You were gone before we knew it. The only God, and only God knows why you had to go home. That's true. Thank you, Bill. So many thoughts. And so as you can tell from what's happened here this morning already, what's in the bulletin isn't really what's happening today because it was printed. And then Thursday night we talked about reprinting, but we didn't even know what to print at that point because we were, so, we were in such shock and not sure what we were going to do. And, and so I've changed the scripture this morning to Romans chapter 8. And I'm just going to read selected verses from that. Because I kept praying and that verse just kept, that chapter kept bubbling up in my spirit and in my heart. And so that's what I want to share with you. I'm going to do that in just a minute. First, let's pray. Gracious and mighty God, give us strength when we don't have it. Be with us this morning as we grieve and as we laugh, as we have pink hair and glitter and tutus and all the things that we're wearing today, the little sleeve band that I can't keep on my arm because it keeps coming off. But all the ways that we're remembering Sarah today, oh God, I pray that she is looking down from heaven and she is seeing the love that we have for her. Be with us as we meditate on your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So let's be honest, we're sad. Loved Clay's story because it is such a good description of what we are all feeling today. We're kind of lost, aren't we? We're grief-stricken. We're in shock. I had no clue what to say to you today, given what happened. Obviously, you don't care about the 10 things I learned while I was away. Not today. But we have to confront our grief, don't we? We can't just turn away. We can't just ignore it. We can't just bury it or stuff it. There's a very clear absence this morning, and I'm sure I wasn't the only one who missed her little bouncy step coming up here to lead us at children's time. Carrying stuff, right? Sitting down, I didn't even want to sit where she always sat this morning because that felt irreverent somehow. You understand what I mean? Do you miss the glitter in the tutus? Organic glitter, of course. You see, she made an impact on our church family and on our community. And there's a little imprint, a little stamp that's on our heart that will always be there. 
And I'm thankful for that. If Sarah decided to quit her job and move away, we would still miss her, but it would be different. So today her address has changed, and now it's heaven. And she is imprinted on our heart. She has made a lasting memory. And so in our sadness today, when words and thoughts and emotions just escape us, we turn where? Is anybody awake this morning? We turn to Scripture. We turn to God's Word to see how we should be guided in our grief. In the middle of all the chaos of trying to assemble the staff Thursday afternoon and have a little meeting and make sure they were all informed, one scripture kept coming to my mind. Romans 8, verse 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. Because let's face it, friends, our words are woefully inadequate right now. And I'll be very honest with you, I'll make a confession that in my grief and my shock and my confusion, I was on renewal leave, okay? And I get a phone call about what had happened. The last thing I was thinking about was coming to the office that afternoon. We were about to have a party at our house for the Aggie game. And we had people coming over to watch the Aggie game Thursday. And in my confusion, in my shock, as I was driving here, the scripture came to my mind, but I couldn't even tell you where it came from. Okay? I didn't know what book it came from. I just knew it was in the Bible. I just knew it was in the New Testament. And it didn't matter at that point. What mattered is it gave me what I needed at that moment. The Spirit intercedes for us and leads us when we don't know where to take a step or when to take a step or what to do. Where do we go from here? Have you ever felt that way? Especially this week? You see, Paul knows of what he speaks as he writes the book of Romans. Remember who he was. He was Saul, the persecutor of Christians. And after his transformation, after his huge Damascus Road experience, the ultimate conversion, he was committed to Christ. He was committed to sharing the word, to proclaiming God's love, to making up for all the things he had done wrong, for the Christians he had killed, and persecuted. So he was dedicated and committed to the cause of Christ. And throughout this book of Romans, he presented the case for the gospel clearly. He was very articulate. And in this eighth chapter, we see the passionate words he offers to those who are struggling. And I'm just going to offer some selected verses, okay? I'm going to read those now. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes according to the will of God. Hear that, church. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God and who are called according to God's purpose. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? 
It is Christ Jesus who died, and yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, and who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of God? Will hardship, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? No. In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Hear me, church. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor car accidents. Nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. You hear those words this morning? Do you feel those words this morning? Because I've never felt they were written more for me than they are today. Paul's words remind us that we at times, we cling to God for strength when we have none of our own. We cling to one another in the body of Christ and we share the comfort for the pain that we all hold in common this morning at the void that joyful presence that's missing from our church family this morning. Now something else I want us to think about, and I'm not going to pass this up because it's very important. Verse 28. It's very confusing, and I'm sorry the words aren't on the screen because nobody knew what I was preaching, okay? So if there's a Bible in the pew rack, if you want to pull it out. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God and who are called according to His purpose. We claim that, and yet this morning we say all things for good? Where is the good in this? There is no good in what happened Thursday afternoon near Perrin, Texas. Brothers and sisters, what I want you to hear me say is in all things, God will work good. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you, Clay. The fee just keeps going up. In all things, God works good. I don't know what's going to happen as a result of this accident that changed our lives, that changed her family's lives. But God will work something good from it. Did God cause this? No, no way. Let's be very clear this morning. Is God grieving? Absolutely. I believe at the moment of that crash, it was God's tear that was the first one that fell. Because God created Sarah. He formed and shaped her into the human being that she was that blessed us so immensely. He knew her long before we knew her. We have a very small window into her life. But I can assure you that he is is holding her in his arms this day. I don't know what he plans from this. Maybe lives will be transformed. Maybe relationships will be mended. I don't know. But God knows that in spite of the grief that we're all feeling and the loss that is very obviously here today, God will make good from what happened I told Sarah more than once, good grief, I should have put it on her phone so she could just play it over and over again. God created you, and he stood back and looked at you, and he smiled and said, wow, I did good. Because she was a masterpiece, right? Signed and numbered masterpiece like no other. I hope she heard me. I hope she internalized that. Because Lord knows we had that conversation many times. So this morning in our bulletin, you see all these things we plan to do. (laughs) 
And we are called to worship here this morning because that is what we do as the people of God. And yet the mood is somber because we loved her so much. In a few moments, we're going to receive communion. And I want you to bear in mind that we will not be defined by what happened Thursday. Sarah would not want that. But we will be changed by it. Forever. This congregation will be changed. You can walk up and down the halls and Sarah's all over the building, isn't she? Good grief. Sparkly Sarah is with us this morning and when we gather around the table to receive the sacrament, she will be with us in spirit because that is what we believe about the body of Christ. She is now a member of the church triumphant. And today as we kneel or as we come with our open hands to receive the sacrament, we do so knowing that Sarah does as well. The communion of saints. Right, church? Today we're reminded that we never know when life can change for us in the blink of an eye. So this morning as you come to receive the sacrament, please do so with open hands, with open hearts, and know that you will be given, and I hope you will receive, the comfort that only God can give. And I hope that as you kneel at the rail, if you choose to do so, or as you return to your seat, that you know that Sarah is kneeling here in our midst. And she always will. Brothers and sisters, thanks be to God. Amen. Loving God, we thank you so much that you gave your only son to die for us. We know that we are sinners, saved by grace. And this morning as our heart is heavy, as we come receive this sacrament, help us to indeed feel your power and your presence, your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Brothers and sisters, we remember that our Savior gathered in the upper room with his disciples the night before he went to the cross and he took bread. He gave thanks. He broke the bread. He gave it to the disciples and he said, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Each one of you, no one is left out. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He filled it and he gave thanks. He passed the cup around the table where the disciples were seated and he said, drink from this all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant. Pour it out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. Friends, won't you pray with me? Oh God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world. The body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ. One with each other and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory. And we feast at his heavenly banquet. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray the prayer that our Lord taught us to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not, for thine is the kingdom and the power, power forever. 
Thank you. Amen. This morning as we gather here, we do so mindful that there are those in our midst who are guests. If you're here this morning and you're not a Methodist, maybe you're a Presbyterian or a Lutheran or maybe you're non-denominational or maybe you're just a believer in Jesus Christ. Know that you are welcome to come and receive this sacrament. If you believe in Jesus Christ or you desire so to believe, this table is open for you. We have gluten-free elements if you should need those as well. Brothers and sisters, some people will be leaving a gift at the rail this morning. And if you would like to do that, know that you're welcome to do that. But it's not required. That is a gift for our assistance fund that allows us to help people who come in our doors throughout this week in need of, of housing or utility assistance or gasoline. And if you would like to do that, know that you're welcome to, but it is not required. It is merely an opportunity to share the blessings God has poured upon you. Will those who are assisting come forward at this time?
as the band continues to play. The rail is open. If you feel the need to come and pray, if you want to grab a friend, a neighbor, someone who you know is really struggling with this loss, please come at the rail. We have all the time in the world. We're actually early for a change. So come to the rail as God leads you. If there are those who would unite with their church family, we would invite you to come as well. This is a great church. I really missed you, by the way. God, I look to you, and I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you, you're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom, you know just what to do. hate to throw you a curveball, but do you have chains in there? In there, okay. I don't need to tell you what happened, but I do need to tell you that I teased Sarah a lot because she never actually joined our church. Do you know that? She was a member of our church in our hearts, right? I guess she was a member of the church in Oklahoma City. I don't know. It doesn't matter because right now, today, she's a member of the church triumphant. We transfer her membership there. We remember her. We always will. And as we remember her this morning, we're going to sing. But before we do, Saturday afternoon at 2 o'clock, we're going to have a memorial service here. And I want you all to wear pink. And if you want to bring glitter, that's fine. Don't tell the custodians I said that. 
But we're going to gather here and we're going to grieve because that's what we need to do Saturday at 2 o'clock. Well done, good and faithful servant. Let's sing our chains are gone. My chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has rescued me. And like a flood, His mercy That is so not fair. Nobody told me that was going to come up on the screen. Isn't that a precious picture of our angel, Sarah? Friends, before, if if you came into worship late and you didn't see the announcement, Lynn and Brenda, could you wave your arms again? Lynn and Brenda have driven over here this morning. They're counselors.